Solar flares erupt with 10 million times more power than a volcanic eruption, making them the most energetic explosions in the solar system, potentially wreaking havoc on satellites, planes, power grids, radio waves, and electronics across the globe. Could we see a solar flare with the power to wipe out human civilization as we know it? The first solar flare recorded in astronomical literature was on September 1st, 1859. Two scientists, Richard C. Carrington and Richard Hodgson, were independently observing sunspots at the time when they viewed a large flare in white light. A solar flare occurs when magnetic energy that has built up in the solar atmosphere is suddenly released. As the magnetic energy is being released, particles, including electrons, protons, and heavy nuclei, are heated and accelerated in the solar atmosphere. Radiation is emitted across virtually the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves at the long wavelength end, through optical emission to X-rays and gamma rays at the short wavelength end. This intense radiation from solar flares reaches the Earth in eight minutes. The amount of energy released is the equivalent of millions of 100 megaton hydrogen bombs exploding at the same time. Yet, this is less than one-tenth of the total energy emitted by the sun every second. There are typically three stages to a solar flare. First is a pre-sensor stage where the release of magnetic energy is triggered. Soft X-ray emission is detected in this stage. In the second or impulsive stage, protons and electronics are accelerated to energies exceeding their normal capacity. During the impulsive stage, radio waves, hard X-rays, and gamma rays are emitted. The gradual buildup and decay of soft X-rays can be detected in, in the dirt. De decay stage, the duration of these stages can be as soft as a few seconds or as long as an hour. Solar flares extend out to the layer of the sun, called the corona. The corona is the outermost atmosphere of the sun, consisting of highly rarefied gas. This gas normally has a temperature of a few million degrees Kelvin. Inside a flare, the temperature typically reaches 10 or 20 million degrees Kelvin and can be as high as 10 million degrees Kelvin. The corona is visible in soft x-rays. To an astronomer, the corona is visible, visible in soft x-rays. To an astronomer, the corona is not uniformly bright, but its highest temperatures are concentrated around the solar equator in loop-shaped features. These bright loops are located within and connect areas of strong magnetic field called active regions. Sunspots are located within these active regions, and solar flares can only occur in active regions. The frequency of flares coincide with the sun's 11-year cycle, when the solar cycle is at minimum. Active regions are small and rare, and few solar flares are detected. These increase in number as the sun approaches the maximum part of its cycle. The sun will reach its next maximum later this year or early 2013. A person cannot view a solar flare by simply staring at the sun. Flares are in fact difficult to see against the bright emission from the fast wave. Instead, specialized scientific instruments are used to detect the radiation signature emitted during a flare. The radio and optical emission, emission from flares can be observed with telescope on Earth. And genetic emission such as X-ray and gamma rays require telescopes located in space. Since these emissions do not penetrate Earth's atmosphere, according to National Oceanic and Hemispheric Administrations, economies around the world will have become increasingly vulnerable to the ever-changing nature of the sun. Solar flares can, in fact, disrupt power grids, interfere with high-frequency airline and military communications. 
disrupt global position systems or GPS signals, interrupt civilian communications, and blanket the Earth's super upper hemisphere with hazardous radiation. Monitoring and forecasting solar outbursts in time to reduce their effect on space-based technologies have become new national priorities. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, part of NOAA's National Weather Service, is the nation's official source of space weather forecasts, alerts, and warnings. To monitor space events on the sun, um, Space Weather Prediction Center staff utilizes a variety of ground and space-based sensors and imaging systems to view activity at various depths in the solar atmosphere. A worldwide network of U.S. Air Force-sponsored optical observatories also provides space weather forecasters with detailed, plain language information about activity in and around sunspot groups, as well as other areas of interest on the sun. Space weather forecasters also analyze the 27-day recurrent pattern of solar activity. Based on a thorough analysis of current conditions, comparing these conditions to past situations and using numerical models to similar uh, weather models, forecasters are able to predict space weather on timescales of hours to weeks. With effective alerts and warnings, we can minimize the hazards to technology. For example, satellite operations can be adjusted, power grids can be modified, and polar flights can be rerouted. Scientists and forecasters work closely with government and university partners to develop prediction models and other tools to improve services to the nation's space weather community. Space Weather Prediction Center also helps move the latest computer models of solar dynamics and Sun-Earth interactions into daily operations of space weather prediction. NOAA and partner agencies in the National Space Weather Program are leading the way in this new era of space weather awareness to provide timely, accurate information and forecasts to help keep our advanced technology global economy moving forward and protecting our way of life.